Welcome back to this YouTube channel. On today's video, we're talking about manufacturing your product in China and what are the pros and the cons of doing that? You know, it comes to having a, an idea in your head, really sketching it out on a napkin, finally creating a prototype, and you're saying, okay, I actually need to find a plant out there, a factory out there, someone out there who can manufacture this thing on a larger scale. How do you go about doing that? And in particular, when it comes to Chinese manufacturing, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? Now, I do a lot of coaching and a lot of talking on this YouTube channel when it comes to launching a product on Kickstarter. So that's specifically what I'm gearing this video to, Kickstarter or Indiegogo. You're trying to get a product manufactured for that reason to fulfill on your rewards after you've raised money successfully. But it could honestly be used in a lot of other contexts. So we're gonna go through some of the major things here when it comes to that. The first pro or advantage of getting your product manufactured in China comes down to labor costs. So whenever you go to a different country, the price of labor is going to change. In the United States, in New York, where I am, there's a very high cost of labor because there's also a high cost of living. You go to different areas in the United States, that, that wage, that salary, that cost of labor actually changes based on the various socioeconomic variables at play, based on the, the price of property, the price of goods, like all that kind of stuff. So actually, if you go into other countries as well, not just China, but Indonesia, you go to India, the price price of labor will actually change depending around where the world that you are. And China obviously is very well known for having a low cost of labor. And labor is what goes into making a product. So when you decrease the cost of labor, you're then able to able to actually decrease the cost of making that product, which could translate into offering the product cheaper to the marketplace, or it could actually fatten those profits for you as a business owner, which you can reinvest into the company to grow it, to hire employees, to advertise, or if you want to, to put back into your own pocket. So the first one is labor costs are a lot cheaper in China, which is a big pro. The next massive pro comes with scalability. Basically, you want to think of it as once this product is made, once you have it manufactured, how hard is it to ramp up? You know, if you really want to create a thousand of these things, how difficult would it be for you to do that? And can the factory that you're working with actually handle that level of order quantity? So China is very well known for having a robust, scalable structure. It's very easy for a factory in China to go from making 50 or 100 of your products to making a thousand of them because they've dealt with those problems before. Because in the region, so much business business has been brought to factories, they've really honed their knowledge and honed their craft, and they're able to scale up with your product much more quickly. Now you take another area of the world, maybe like the United States, you have you come to a factory in the United States, you might be able to make you know a, a good portion of your products, but if you ask them to then take on this really big order quantity, they might not be able to do that because they haven't been experienced with dealing with scalability problems and, and large scale orders in the same way. Another big pro or advantage to China is familiarity. So familiarity with a product, um, you know, because China, because factories in China have manufactured so many different types of products over the years, th there, there's a really good chance they will have created a product that's similar to yours or one that's in the same industry as yours. So they have some knowledge when it comes to how to actually manufacture this effectively, how to do it quickly and cheaply. And due to the familiarity, just from having worked with so many different projects over the years, they're really good on the familiarity front. Now, you can think of that in actually any other industry, like me having worked with lots and lots of different business owners and lots of people who have raised money. I have a lot of familiarity when it comes with ideas that work and ones that don't. I have a good handle on the different categories of Kickstarter, the ones that you know are good for getting strangers to back your project, and the one that you're gonna need more help with family and friends, and the different marketing strategies behind that. So familiarity not only speeds up this entire process, but it also makes sure that you're going to get the product that you want, the one that you've been envisioning. Another thing that I like about Chinese manufacturing is that there are websites and resources out there. So websites and resources like, let's just say Alibaba. If you're going into a new country and you're trying to find business partners, you know, I call them partners because that's really what a manufacturer is. Is there a partner trying to get this product out there to your customers? There are websites out there. There are directories of suppliers of manufacturers and factories. You can go on Alibaba and you can see and get a sense of, okay, what's like the price per product or price per unit could be like for a similar product in the industry? What's the minimum order quantity? You can actually talk with different manufacturers there 
they are on that website and other directories. So I do like that when it comes to manufacturing in China, there is a little bit of handholding there. Um, definitely, you do have to do a lot. You have your work cut out to, for you, but there are also, of course, other firms out there that will help you get your product manufactured. They'll help you in terms of, they have boots on the ground in China who can talk with the actual person there, um, you know, talk with the supervisor, talk with the person running the plant, and they can make sure that you are getting the product that you want it. So I'll include a link to some of the companies out there that can help you with that down below in the description of this YouTube video. That's another big pro. Um, aside from websites and assets, I'd say Another really big advantage to Chinese manufacturing is uh, marketplace expansion. More and more, we're seeing the growth of the middle class uh, when it comes to China. You know, more people are becoming wealthy in China, whether it's a result of creating a business or real estate, we're seeing higher and higher incomes. And I know it's true that still China is very, you know, there are poor people and there are wealthy people, but at the same time, there is a growing middle class of consumers who are able to actually take their money and to spend it on items that they maybe don't need, but that they want. There's such higher disposable levels of income than ever before in China. So the cool thing is if you want to actually expand your offering and sell products in other marketplaces like in China or around the world, in other countries around there, you can do that because your products will already be there. So we'll get into some of the cons in just a second, but your products will be close to your customers, which means it's an easy transition into the marketplace. Now I'm not including this on, on my pro list, but basically also if you wanted to, you could uh, reproduce other products that are out there because of the sophistication of Chinese manufacturing. You could reverse engineer products. There's reproduction capability, if you will, uh, but I'm gonna leave that up to you if that's something that you wanna do. I try to focus on new and innovative products with my coaching students and particularly when it comes to Kickstarter. Um, so that's just something to, to keep in mind. But let's talk a little bit about the cons of Chinese manufacturing because we talked a little bit about the pros. One of the, the biggest cons that I I see out there is quality control. Quality control, by that I mean making sure that the products that are being made are up to par with the quality that you're promising your customers. So that when someone buys something from you, they get a quality product, they have a great experience, and in that way you're growing your brand. They're posting a positive review on Amazon, or they're posting a positive review online, or they're giving you good feedback. You want people to have quality products because that's where the relationship building element of this comes to play and when you really begin to build a brand online. The problem is that if you're dealing with a factory overseas, you don't have direct level of quality control there. You're basically leaving it up to the factory to do the quality control and that's a major problem because it can mean defective products, it could mean products that don't meet your specifications, maybe your design, uh, your CAD files or all the files that you gave the, the Chinese manufacturing plant. For whatever reason, there's a mess up there. So there are quality control problems when it comes to getting your product manufactured in China. Another problem that I see, very obvious here, but a lot of people will overlook it, is the language barrier. Just going to other countries, um, I was in El Salvador in January of this year, or February, and um, I was just like so floored that no one there spoke English, and I wasn't really prepared for that. And that's like dumb on my front, like I should know more Spanish. Like I know a little bit of Spanish, but I should know more. And it was just so hard to get around and to communicate with people. Well, just imagine not knowing Chinese, a language which is not a romance language, it's a little bit more complex than Spanish. You're having to communicate to someone overseas the very minute specifications of your product, how to make this correctly, and making sure that the, the quality control that it's made to the specifications that you want it to. So having any kind of business relationship, a healthy one, is all about communication and making sure they understand what is in your head. A lot of the times there's miscommunication when it comes to getting your product manufactured in China. So the language barrier is real, and if possible, if you're really serious about this product about this business, you're going to want someone on your team who speaks Chinese, you know, sort of talking Mandarin or Cantonese, or you want to deal with people who are there in China or in the country where you're going to get outsourced, um, outsource your, your, your product manufacturing, and have them communicate to make sure that they actually understand what it is you're saying. At the end of this video, I will also suggest some ways to combat some of these cons, but I just want to draw them to your attention. Another big thing with um, Chinese manufacturing is actually finding 
the manufacturer. This is a bit of a problem because there are many middlemen out there. If you go on a website like Alibaba, you're not always guaranteed that you're dealing with the actual manufacturer, the owner of the, of the plant there. And you could be dealing with a middleman who basically is making a little bit of money by being the middleman between you and the actual manufacturer there in China. And that's a difficulty because that means you're going through another layer, you're paying more than you should, so it's hard to typically find a good quality manufacturer in China, and it's almost like an investment. You wanna guard that secret with your life. It literally is a trade secret for your business where you're getting your products made, the specific factory. When it comes to finding a good manufacturer, there are ways to do this. Um, you have to do a lot of vetting. You have to make sure, this is a whole process, make sure that that person has made products that are similar to yours, that they're also not gonna steal your IP, and that actually leads me to another um, con or disadvantage with China. Copyright and IP. What is your IP? IP is how the product is made, making it so that no one else can manufacture the same thing. They can rip you off, they can steal your idea. This is a real problem when it comes to getting your product manufactured in China because it is so easy to reproduce products that if you give a plant or a factory your design files, they can literally take that and they can use that in malicious ways or just because of out of sight of your knowledge, maybe someone sees it. So this is a real problem and there are ways to combat IP and to protect your IP when you're getting your product manufactured somewhere else overseas, whether that's China or not. And um, that, that's something that we can talk about in a future video. Because this country is so far away from the United States and probably you know Europe and wherever country you are from, um, there are naturally going to be shipping costs. Shipping costs to get this product into the hands of your fulfillment provider or into the hands of your customers. So shipping costs will actually impact the cost that goes into creating this product and thus your profit margins and the viability of your business. The fact that China is so far away means it takes time naturally to get the products to you and that adds to your shipping costs. Another disadvantage would be uh, minimum order quantities. This is the number of products that you must order in order for the factory to basically want to do business with you. It's not profitable for them to make five or ten products for you and to spend all of their man hour and time and focus on that. They're going to have a minimum ordered quantity which you must meet in order to be able to put this order into the factory basically and make it worthwhile for them from a business standpoint. So you're going to have a minimum order quantity um, and this is, this is kind of where uh, actually Kickstarter will come into play. So if you have a minimum order quantity for your product, you did your research, you can then do a Kickstarter campaign with your prototypes, you can raise a bunch of money, the money that you then use to fulfill the minimum order quantity order, and then you can get this product into the hands of your backers. So this is actually a very common problem meeting this minimum order quantity, there are a few things you can do. You can raise outside capital, you can save a bunch of money and invest it into your business, you can get a business loan or even just a loan using credit cards or lending club or something like that. But the, the most common way that I see because of I'm working in this industry is using Kickstarter or Indiegogo to raise the money to then meet this minimum order quantity. The final con that I'll, I'll list here are, this is a little bit more like amorphous or not as specific, but global events. It's kind of like you know an act of God or there's a tsunami or there's an earthquake or something happens. Uh, maybe the ship that had your products are they sink or something like that or there's a some kind of a uh, some kind of horrific event that happens at the manufacturing plant and it explodes like i don't know you know but there are global events that can affect the supply chain this is a reality of being an entrepreneur the events that happen on the news are real things that are happening in the world this could affect your business and this could affect the supply chain the fact that customer there might be delays in getting the product from the manufacturer the fulfillment provider to then your customers or the manufacturer to your customers um, or to you, there are global events that happen. And this isn't just obviously with China, this is anytime you're outsourcing your manufacturing to another country and you're not just making, you're putting this thing together in your, your basement or your garage or something like that. One of the most frustrating things I think as an entrepreneur when I was getting started was this knowledge that I have to educate myself, that I have to spend time learning these things. Like I have to learn how manufacturing works. I have to learn how marketing works. I have to learn new stuff like crowdfunding or Kickstarter or 
do, how do you actually present yourself on video or my podcast or writing? Like as a business owner and as a leader, you always have to be learning. And for the one thing, I really congratulate you being willing to watch a video like this online. Not a lot of people are students like that. So I really congratulate you for that. Um, I invite you to dive into my channel for some of the other videos that I have out there on crowdfunding, on manufacturing, on business, et cetera. But I'm gonna also include um, a link down below. You can check below the description of this video for some more resources when it comes to manufacturing and also some of the companies out there that can help you with this. If you don't wanna do this all alone and trying to figure this out yourself and get ripped off, there are companies out there that will hold your hand, but naturally they are also going to, to charge you in order to, to do that and to provide that service for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I would love it if you could leave a comment also down below. Not always able to reply to those, but I do read them and I try to make it so that this is a, a two-way street. You know, I'm not just like talking to you wherever you are in the world, wherever type of business you have, I am excited for you. Like, it's so cool to me that innovation is happening um, on Kickstarter, that new things are coming to light, that new products are being created in the world. It's, it makes me want to come to work every day and um, to come and just like help and play a very small part in that process. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, my name is Sal and I'll see you next time.